could say this is a record-breaking city. It has the world's longest bridge, fastest train, and until recently, tallest ever building. This place is so famous that it's even an English verb. It was the birthplace of an economic revolution that led to modern China and is one of the engines that powers China's supercharged economy. This stop is Shanghai. Welcome to Culture Shock. Located on China's central eastern coast, Shanghai is split by two districts by the Hungpao River, with Pudong being the more modern brother to the older Pusi on the West Bank. The largest city in China, it was once a sleepy fishing and textile town. In the 1850s, the term Shanghai was even used as a verb to describe drugging and kidnapping of sailors for forced service aboard ships that frequently docked and traded in Shanghai. But despite the negative start, modern Shanghai is living out a totally different story. A vibrant vision of development and economic growth. Today, Shanghai has grown into a busy center with international commerce and is one of the fastest growing cities in the world. And helping me navigate this thriving city is my savvy associate, Soon. I mean, you've got one of the, the train, the world's fastest train here, I heard. No, 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 no. I, uh, I don't think it's good. You know, you have a big luggage. It's no good for luggage. Okay. Uh, just take a taxi. It's fine. The best way to the city from the airport is by taxi. Shanghai taxis are no different from their counterparts in other countries, with just one exception. The drivers are caged. But don't be alarmed, soon we'll explain why. You know why? Uh, before I have the guy, some guy, like uh, they just finished the bar, really drunk. And they want to fight him with the driver. And also have some big guy. Hey, <laughs> show me the money. Okay. You know. The company is really right. care about that. Yes, yeah, so it's for course. safety. It's for yeah, safety yeah. protection. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There are a few types of colored taxis in Shanghai. Whenever possible, try to avoid dark red or maroon taxis as they are operated by small taxi companies and drivers will very likely take you for a ride. Though Shanghai is the largest and the most developed city in China, its streets are not as confusing as it initially seems. It has an extensive public transport system of buses, trolleys, taxis and metro system that will bring you virtually anywhere in Shanghai. While traffic is fairly smooth and convenient, the great influx of foreigners and Chinese from other parts of China to seek their fortune in Shanghai have contributed to the increasing congestion. With its rapid urbanization, Shanghai is also a melting pot of cultures. You see all the uh, buildings behind me. They're a real mishmash of architectural styles. There's so much difference here. We've got corporate chic, space age, retro. There's no real unifying theme uniting all these buildings together. I think this is a reflection of the Shanghai's cosmopolitan culture. But not only that, it demonstrates the Shanghai mindset of doing whatever it takes to stand out from the crowd. Perhaps it is this drive to be outstanding and recognized that has made Shanghai literally a record-breaking city. To get a feel of what it's like at the top, I went to the top of a building to see the world's longest arch bridge. Come on, follow me. Wow. You see that? You know this? No. This is a roof of bridge. It's the longest uh, arch bridge on the world. Really? Yes. It's very impressive. The 3.9 kilometer Lupu Bridge opened in 2003 and offers a spectacular view of Shanghai's expo site on both sides of the river. The magnificent vista stretched before me is living proof that Shanghai is China's bridge to the world economy and the land of dreams for aspiring entrepreneurs. It is a site that tempts people to do this. Just follow me, okay? Shanghai! Ni hao ma! Yeah, just do it. Really? Yeah. Okay. Shanghai! Ni hao ma! <laughs> Very good. What does that mean? Shanghai, how are you? Shanghai, how are you? Yes. Hey, I'll, I'll teach you something. 
Shanghai show me the money. Try it. Go on. Me? Yeah, go on. Okay. Shanghai show me the money. Where's the money? Shanghai show me the money. Twenty years ago, Shanghai's tallest building was the Park Hotel, which was built in the 1930s. Since then, over 4,000 buildings have gone up, 2,000 of which have been skyscrapers. And this rapidly changing cityscape is evidence of Shanghai's ferocious economic growth and evolving business culture. Back in the city, Shanghai is in full swing, expanding the skyline. The Shanghai Business District boasts of famous landmarks like the Jin Mao Tower. It is also home to offices of many multi-international companies. So many construction cranes everywhere. Yeah, you know, lot of building just going on. While Europeans took centuries to build some of their cities, Shanghai took just decades. As massive urbanization is still undergoing, the persistent sound of construction can be heard throughout the city. China currently consumes 40% of the world's concrete and 90% of its steel, and Shanghai is growing faster than any other city in the world. The United Nations estimates that Shanghai will be home to more than 23 million inhabitants by 2015, and in its midst is a vibrant expatriate community. With society moving at such a fast pace, I have no time to waste and quickly join a networking session with the expatriate community. Networking, or establishing Guan Si, is one of the tricks to doing business in Shanghai. The right connections and referrals will open many doors of business opportunities for the well-acquainted entrepreneur. Everything that we do in Shanghai, we you know someone that gets you in the door where you're going. Things are very much about Guanxi, so whether you're in a business relationship, whether you're seeking something out from a new person, or trying to figure out how to do something here, it's all about the people you know and who the people you know know. And the interesting thing about Shanghai is that it's the, the Guanxi relationships are equally important, it feels like, with the Westerners as they are when you have a business relationship with the Chinese. It's both, it's part of your business relationship, but your social and your business relationship are very, very intertwined. While providing a platform of support for the expatriate community, Being Shanghai adds another layer of service to the community through their philanthropic activities. This session has truly been an eye-opener for me. Well, what a full day. I've seen some of Shanghai's record breakers, I've tasted some of its adventurous food, and I've just been on an induction into its business circles. But there's still a lot more to know. The initiation continues tomorrow. Today I will meet my Shanghainese clients and I hope to close a deal with them. But first, some tips from Sun on Shanghai business culture. So, is uh, everything arranged for the, the restaurant? Ah, yes, I arrange everything. You know, like a, a nice knife, nice fork, <laughs> nice base. But a big guy, <laughs> we need arrange very, very, very perfect. Don't worry. Okay, okay. Yeah. And it's important, is it? Because we need to give them face uh, in Chinese means. Looking good is important. Yeah. And this gives you face. It sort of yeah. makes you feel and look good. Yes, yes. Okay. Yes. And is it common for before a business meeting to have a restaurant meeting? Chinese. Tou qi zuo hao. Tou qi shou hao. Yeah. You know why? Okay, I ask you a question. Okay. What do you like? Well, I like beer. I okay, tomorrow I bring two for you. You will remember it. So what you're saying is that these preliminary restaurant meetings that you have, you you, you might listen to your host. Sorry, you might listen to the person you're you're hosting. Yes. Find out what they like, and then at some other point, give them a gift or a present or or. 
just to show that you appreciate them and you're listening to them. Does everybody, everybody speak Mandarin here? Uh, yes, but you know, a lot of people they speak Shanghainese. Shanghainese? Like uh, the two girls. You see? <laughs> can you okay. teach me something I can use for a business meeting? Of course. Yeah. So like you can see the... Uh, thank you very much. You know, in, in the Shanghainese it's... Shayano. Shoyono. Shayano. Shajun Shajano. Can you just give me slower? Shajano. Shajano. What about something simple like, hello? Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. Like, uh, first to meet your, uh, the, the people. Nong ha. Nong ha. Nong ha. Yeah, okay, very good. Yeah. Nong ha. Nong ha. You, you know the me? No. The me is, uh, hello? Hello, yeah. Uh, I feel uh, so. How are you? Yeah, like, like this, yeah, yeah. Ah, you have good. to be very careful with this, don't you? Like you have yeah. to really think, listen carefully to the way you say it, because the way you say it's very important. Isn't oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you what about like things like body oh, oh, language? Yeah, yeah. Yes. Okay, give me a hand. Oh, yeah. Whoa, oh, wow. Like this. That's very strong. Yeah, yeah. Make warm. Yes. So big, big touch is good. Yeah, yeah touching yeah. is good. Big yeah, warm. Yeah, yes. Yeah. Important guy. A little bit use power, a but not too much. A little bit. Armed with a smattering of Shanghainese, I'm ready to meet my Shanghai clients. This is Nick Shizan. This is Nick. This is Boss Ma. Boss Ma. Ah, no Hua. No Hua. No Hua. No Hua. The Shanghai meal before business meetings is a means to better understand each other. Seemingly simple questions are a way to access relevant background information. Yes. Uh, Nick, yes. Uh, where, where are you uh, staying now? Oh, um, the Lexington Hotel. It's very, very nice. Mm. Ah. Mm. Very nice. Yeah. Mr. Ask you where you, where you buy this it's very nice <laughs> this shirt. Yeah, I think my wife bought it for me. You got a lot of buy man. Come back, you catch his acting. Send Carla. You ask already married. Hmm. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. For, for a few years now. You just got My I have one son. He's 15 months. Uh -huh. My wife is pregnant, uh -huh. and we're going to have a, a, a daughter in December. You just got married. You you have a son. I'm going to have a son. You 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 have a son. Oh, congratulations! Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I think the lunch has worked to put me in good light with my Shanghainese clients. Now, when we sit down to talk about business, the atmosphere remains cordial and open. As the city has flourished with international trade, business is still the universal language of Shanghai. However, Chinese business negotiations are still a complex art to me. Besides the guanxi, I also have to be careful about giving face. It involves being sensitive to the honor and reputation of the other party. Unappealing public displays and negative sentiments are best avoided. My advice is keep things polite and discreet. Another aspect of Shanghai's beauty is the constant hive of activity. Its people not only work hard, but they also play hard. Amidst the rush towards economic development, an older Shanghai still lingers on in the form of the elderly exercising in gardens, laundry draped alleys, back street vegetable markets and water towns, providing a sensory contrast to skyscrapers and super malls. Early on a typical morning, there is already a lively gathering of people on the streets, and I don't mean professionals rushing off to work.
Despite the slight autumn chill, there are many Chinese people, especially retirees, out exercising. They form interest groups to practice their workouts together in the nearby park. In England, on a cold autumn morning, you go to the park, you see someone walking their dog, someone jogging, perhaps. Here, in Shanghai, you see all manner of activities. We've got people doing some Tai Chi, we've got people flying kites, we've got people with a spinning top, people playing badminton. There is so much activity going on. It's unbelievable. Perhaps this is why the Chinese live longer. They're certainly a lot more health conscious than us. but also meditation and just enjoying moving in a space in such a graceful and almost balletic way. Exercises like the Tai Chi martial arts are a good way for competitive Shanghai people to relax and relieve their stress. In fact, Tai Chi can almost be called a national pastime. Another common exercise is Chi Ling, or the playing of bells. It requires the player to balance the bell by pulling back and forth on the string like a giant yo-yo. It looks so invitingly fun that I decide to have a go at it myself. Hey, whoa, 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 whoa. Stay with me. That's it. Oh, no, don't do that. Don't do that. Oh, why do you do that? Besides the wide variety of morning exercises, Shanghai has even more to offer in terms of variety of food. I'm now meeting Sun and his wife Emma for lunch to get a taste of Shanghai's local cuisine. Chinese cuisines alone have 16 major regional styles. Local Shanghai dishes are called burn bang chai. It is generally characterized as sweet and oily in taste. After tasting the first few dishes, I was encouraged to try some of the more exotic foods like drunken prawns, frog soup, and something I wouldn't quite expect. Nick, this is duck's tongue. <laughs> I never knew a duck's tongue was so big. Look at that. It's so long. Duck's tongue doesn't taste as scary as it sounds. And besides that, I was introduced to another of Shanghai's specialities. Shanghai crab. Shanghai crab. Very popular amongst businessmen, and there's a technique to eating them. First you start eating from the legs, you pluck them out, and then you crush the shells with your teeth and you salt the meat. Oh, yes, I did it. But that's not all. After the legs, you prise open the shell for more meat inside. But before you eat anything else, you must first clear it of its gills, as it is unpalatable. And after you've gotten rid of its gills, break the crab into half and dip it into the sauce. And voila! Nice, really nice. <laughs> I like it. Fresh Did tasting. Uh -huh. yeah, 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 very good. After delighting in a feast, Sun and Emma take me to the serene town of Chibao for a glimpse of ancient Shanghai. And people say, Shanghai a hundred years, Chibao a thousand years. And that's because some of this is a thousand years old. 
The best way to experience China's old character is to take a tour by boat through the two canals that cross Qibao. Located at the Minghang district of Shanghai, away from the buzz of the city, the town of Qibao takes the modern traveler on a fascinating journey through ancient China with its well-conserved buildings, some dating back to the Song, Ming and Qing dynasties. Unlike the more contemporary towns, the time-worn bricks and stones of Qibao create an atmosphere of tranquility and rustic elegance. Next, the Soons bring me to the bands, and looking across the river at Pudong, I am struck by the sharp contrast. Before me are towering skyscrapers and futuristic architecture, while behind me stands well-preserved European buildings reminiscent of old Shanghai. When night falls, both shores light up with a myriad of beautiful shimmering colors. Shanghai, without doubt, is one of the most happening cities in the world. It is a city of world records and opportunities, where dream seekers, businessmen and visitors flock to for a chance to make their dreams come true. And modernization in recent years have brought back much of Shanghai's nightlife. Shanghai is an energetic, adventurous, all-embracing city that really deserves the Chinese term renown. It is moving and changing so fast that blink and you might miss something. Which makes me wonder, what will this Shanghai be like in 30 years' time? Well, only time will tell. One thing's for sure, right now, the jazz is back, the whiff of wealth is in the air, and once again, Shanghai is swinging! I've had a blast. And I am looking forward to more culture shocking moments until I see you again on Culture Shock.